With that having been said, a lot of people think that they need the latest and greatest laptop that's out there to be a hacker. I think what's, what's, what's so great about the world today, there's so much free stuff out there um, or low cost stuff. The, the barriers to entry of, are lowered. What's the perfect ha laptop to use for hacking? You, right. know, you, you and I get this question all the time. And so let's let's try to address this. And uh, in that way, people can get a better idea of what they should be purchasing to start their career in cybersecurity. When I read stuff like this, it makes me really worry. The UK is secretly testing a controversial web snooping tool. Congress just voted to let internet providers sell your browsing history. VPN providers flee India. They are pulling their physical servers from the country as a mandate to collect customer data goes into effect. There is mass surveillance in Australia. It makes me really worry about the level of snooping and data collection that governments are implementing. If you're worried about privacy, you probably want to get a VPN. Based on books that I've read such as this, How to Hack Like a Ghost, written by a hacker, or Extreme Privacy, written by a privacy advocate. Based on the interviews that I've had with hackers, with privacy experts, with OSINT experts and the like, I have come to the conclusion that the VPN provider that I can recommend is Proton VPN. This is a VPN provider that I actually use. It's based in Switzerland. I think that's a great thing. Their software is open source. If you want to enhance your security, I would recommend Proton VPN. And I really want to thank them for sponsoring this video. Hey everyone, David Bumble back with Occupy the Web. Welcome, Occupy the Web. Thanks, David. It's always good to be back on your show and uh, and talking to you about hacking and IT issues. It's great to have you back. Just for everyone who hasn't watched our previous videos, we've done quite a few. I've put a playlist below. Occupy the Web is the author of this book, fantastic book if you want to learn Linux from a hacker's perspective. He's also got this book, Getting Started, Becoming a Master Hacker. Both fantastic books. Go and have a look at the reviews on Amazon. You'll see that people really like the books. So Occupy the Web, what are we going to be talking about today? We're not going to be continuing our Mr. Robot series in this video. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to try to answer a question that both you and I get very, very often, which is, what's the perfect ha laptop to use for hacking? You, right. know, you, you and I get this question all the time. And so let's let's try to address this. And uh, in that way, people can get a better idea of what they should be purchasing to start their career in cybersecurity. Now, Occupy the Web, I've got a whole bunch of questions here, but before we get into sort of my list of questions, do you want to like start the conversation? Yeah, I've got a few comments that I want people to keep in mind in terms of trying to buy a laptop for cybersecurity hacking. And, and, and the first comment I want to make is that hacking is 80% the human and 20% the machine, right? So don't focus so much on the machine as much as the skill knowledge that is required to be a good hack. With that having been said, a lot of people think that they need the latest and greatest laptop that's out there to be a hacker. It's not like a gamer machine. Gamer machines are very demanding and they need to be the latest and greatest and have the best graphics cards and the most memory and what have you. As hackers, we don't require that. Our applications are generally relatively small and simple. And so you don't need the latest and greatest machine. What I would tell people as a starting point is that if you can't afford the newest and best machine, go out and buy yourself, you know, a five-year-old machine that you can buy for half price and get started. It's more important to get started than it is to wait for the perfect machine, because really what you need to do is to develop your knowledge and skills right? That's 80%. And only 20% is the machine. A older system that will cost you maybe a third of what a brand new system will cost you will build your skill set and do almost as well as a brand new state-of-the-art machine. Remember, once again, you know, we're running Linux and Linux is relatively lightweight and the, the scripts that we're running and the tools that we're using are not demanding. So let's try to get away from the idea that I need to go out and spend an exorbitant amount of money for a biggest and best machine, right? What you need is a machine. <laughs> That's more yeah. important and developing your skills. So let's focus on that. Now, having said that, let's talk a little bit about 
what you need in that machine. So the CPU, the brain of the machine, the Intel, the AMD, is really not that critical for hacking. It's it's important. You know, it does its, it does what it has to do <laughs> running your machine. But the speed of it is not that important. The, the faster those CPUs are, the more expensive they are. And it's an exponential curve, you know, the faster. So just to get a little bit more speed, you have to pay twice as much, right? But you can easily use a system that's just a few years old and not quite as fast and a lot cheaper and get just as much performance. And the CPU is really not that critical to most hacking applications except password cracking. CPUs are not ideal for password cracking, right? You're, you're much better off using, say, a GPU or using a GPU farm or using a cloud server, unless there's a really small, simple password. So, you know, even though the CPU is used for password cracking, say, in cracking Wi-Fi passwords or or going ahead and trying to crack some hashes that you've gotten from another system. If it's a complex password at all, your CPU is just not an efficient way of doing it. So investing a lot of money in a CPU, okay, the fastest and best CPU is not a good investment. <laughs> it's not a good investment. A better investment is to take that money and use it to buy a, a GPU or rent a GPU or rent a cloud service that can really crank out hashes really, really fast. I seldom, if ever, use my CPU to crack passwords. And I also should point out that my go-to machine for penetration testing and hacking is probably four or five years old. It's not brand new. It's been around a while. I like it. I use it <laughs> every day. And so that kind of, I wanted to re-emphasize that point that you don't need the latest and greatest, okay? What you need, you need is a system. You need a good system. If I could emphasize a few aspects of that machine, it would be that I would emphasize RAM because you need to oftentimes run multiple processes, multiple applications simultaneously. And I'm, sometimes I'm running multiple VM. And so the more RAM I have, the less problems I'm going to have. Things are going to run smoother. Now, how much is enough RAM? Well, you know, a bare minimum is probably going to be four gigs, right? I run 32 gigs. Yep. Okay. And so four gigs, I think is a bare minimum 32, 64, you know, if you're a pro, but that's expensive, yep. right? That's, yeah. that's expensive. So if you're going to put your money someplace, I would put it into RAM. And then of course you're going to need, if you want to have any idea of doing some Wi-Fi hacking, which lots of people like to do. I mean, that's a real, one of the most popular uh, activities of newcomers to hacking is to hack the Wi-Fi, right? Well, you're going to need to invest a little bit of money into a good Wi-Fi adapter. And, you know, there's a, almost all of the Wi-Fi cracking tools at their heart are using air crack. You know, we have lots of different tools, but they're all using largely air crack at their heart. And air crack has what's called a compatibility list on their website. If you go to aircrackng.com and go to their compatibility list, but they list the compatible adapters by chipset. And most people don't know the chipset <laughs> that's in their Wi-Fi adapter. So if you don't know that, tried and true is go with an alpha. Do you have a do you have a special a specific one that you like? Well, I mean, I've got several that I have. And once again, password cracking is is not one of those that is a function of speed. The important part for password cracking is getting the hash. And that's not a function of speed. You could be using an old adapter and it'll work just as fast as a brand a new adapter because it has nothing to do with the speed of transmission, right? Or very little. There's actually does make a small amount of difference, right? I would say go out and, you know, if you're on a budget, buy a used one. You can buy them on eBay, other places. Don't, don't go out and buy the latest and greatest. I have several of the latest and greatest, and quite frankly, they don't work that much better than my old ones that I've had for 10 years. If you're on a budget, go to eBay or other place where you can buy used equipment and look for an old alpha and that'll do the job for you. And I've got some even cheaper ones that I have purchased over the years and tested them out and and, and they work out pretty well. I'm glad you said this because, sorry, I, I just wanted to say this before we continue. I really, I'm really glad that you emphasize this because 
you see it in any domain. Uh, just being on YouTube, you can see it with YouTubers who spend fortunes on equipment. And then yes. you get someone who's a really great YouTuber and all they have is a phone or an old camera. The tool doesn't make you better. It, it, exactly. It, it's, the, it's the person who determines the quality or the, you know, the output, not just the tool. So I'm really glad that you emphasized that. Sorry, I didn't want no. to interrupt you. Hacking is 80% the person, 20% the machine. So let's yeah. focus on the person and not the machine. And the other question I get a lot also is that, well, if I'm going to be a hacker, I've got to go out and buy all those toys. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, got, I've got to have all those toys that I see in the YouTube videos, you know? And it's like, no, you don't need all those toys, right? You can do a really good job and be very proficient without all those toys. And I refer to them as toys. I mean, the Wi-Fi pineapple and... and uh, air getting and uh, a number like of a, like a, like like rubber ducky that kind of stuff rubber right? rubber ducky that's what I was thinking of thank you yeah yeah you don't you don't need all those things I mean if you're just starting out right you don't need those things and you can do almost all of those things that you can accomplish the same thing without those toys but it's a little bit more time consuming maybe a little harder but you'll you'll have learned a lot by going ahead and trying to do the same thing without all the toys and certainly i mean i had i had a young person come to me the other day and say you know i've got a good laptop but i can't afford to buy all the rubber ducky and the wi-fi pineapple and you don't need those things but they have been left with this impression that they can't be a hacker without those things. Those things are nice and hack five makes them. And, you know, and, and, and I've done a number of tutorials and, and classes on SDR and SDRs is, is, a, is a lot of fun and it's a very important area of hacking. But when most of what we do, or at least to get started, you can start with a very inexpensive RTL SDR, which costs like $30 or you can buy them used for even less than that. You know, once you get proficient, then you can go and move up to the Hack RF or some of the other more expensive SDR devices. But really what I am, want to emphasize here is that it's more important to invest in yourself in developing the skills and the knowledge than it is in the hardware. The hardware is, is only an extension of the hacker behind them. So get yourself, get yourself a machine, get started and, and start developing your skills. And don't worry so at so much about the hardware that's involved. Although there are some essentials, right? I mean, we do need you do need a laptop, you do need a, a Wi-Fi compatible adapter, an air crack compatible adapter if you're going to crack the uh, uh, Wi-Fi. You do need enough RAM maybe to run some virtual machines to get started. Okay, you don't even need that, but to get started, you want to be hacking in a safe environment. And virtual machines are a good safe environment for you to hone your your skills and uh, and the more ram you have the the more virtual machines you can run that gets to one of my questions is and i'm sorry to if you were you if you were you were going for it but it's um bare metal versus virtual machines and you kind of mentioned virtual machines so i'm assuming for a beginner you would recommend, correct me if I'm wrong, um, like a virtual machine is the way to start, right? Yeah, I think the best way for a beginner to start is through virtual machines. That way, you know, you're, you're, you're self-enclosed. You don't have to be dependent upon the, you know, a website, what have you. You've got your, you got a target, okay? You've got your attack machine. Everything's internally enclosed. You don't have to worry about having an internet connection and you can practice all your skills all day long as much as you want, okay, even with the internet down on your virtual machine. So that's the way to start. Now, that's maybe not the way that is, is the best way once you become a professional. But once you're starting out, those virtual machines are really the way to go. So you'd start like a Kali Linux or something in a virtual machine and then like a, 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 a device that you're going to attack, you build your own little like network on your Windows laptop or something. And that's how exactly. you practice initially, right? Yeah. Exactly. So with either uh, VirtualBox or VMware's Workstation, and I have both of them, I use both of them. I prefer VMware's Workstation. I think it's a little bit more stable. It doesn't crap out as much. Its networking is easier to work with and more stable, but it is more expensive. I mean, once again, if we're thinking about trying to build this on a budget, VirtualBox is free and it works pretty darn good. 
Okay. I've been using it for years and it's gotten a lot better. It's gotten a lot. It used to be much quirkier than it is now, but it works pretty darn good. So if you're on a budget, go free virtual box. And then Kali, of course, is free. And then you can go ahead and download any number of virtual targets right, that you can work with. You know, if you even have an extra copy of Windows, you can build yourself an ex- you can build yourself a virtual Windows and a uh, and try attacking your Windows 10 or Windows 7 or Windows 11 system in a virtual environment where you don't have to worry about any possibilities of breaking any laws or sending malicious packets over the web that might, you know, might in different countries is going to be illegal. Keep it enclosed, keep it self-contained. And I think that's a really good environment to start practicing and developing those skills. And you can do that with a relatively inexpensive system. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, just push Uh-oh. back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask, I've got, you know, I'm going to ask all the questions. I like to say that people are either too ashamed to ask or too scared to ask or too embarrassed to ask or whatever. But I, I, we, I get a lot of these questions. I'm sure you get them as well. So um, do I need a Windows laptop, Linux laptop, or Mac, or doesn't it matter? Well, if you're running virtual machines, it doesn't really matter. So if you're running virtual machines, your host system, okay, the the physical system that you're running on, it doesn't matter if it's a Mac, if it's a Windows or Linux system, because you're all going to have these these virtual machines inside of that operating system. So I would say it doesn't matter. I will say this, just I'm, I'm sure this will be, will, be, uh, will be asked or commented below. With the M1s and M2s, it gets a lot more complicated. I don't know if you've used them, but I have them, and it, it becomes a nightmare. So um, I would personally say rather get an Intel or something else because there's issues running VMs on a, on an M1, M2 at the moment because you have to okay. use ARM. Um, you can't use like all the Intel x86 stuff on, on M1s, M2s. I didn't know that. I don't run Mac, so that, that's – why? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, I mean I've, so I'm actually, I've got a, a lot of my students do, and they've never expressed to me any problems, but I, I don't run Mac at all. So I run Windows and I run Linux. So yeah, so you run Linux natively. Um, I'm assuming that's when you're doing attacks like proper stuff. And then you run yes. Windows for like demos and like teams exactly. and stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I'll, sorry, go on. Well, thanks for putting it out there. I didn't know that there was a problem with the M1s and M2s. In my experience, and this is just my opinion, so, you know, please comment below anyone who's, who's found it otherwise. But the only way that you can get it to work kind of is like you can use something called UTM, which is a, like a free QMU emulator if you want to run x86 on um, on Mac M1 M2s. Uh, if you use a VMware Fusion, um, which is like virtual, sorry, which is like VMware Workstation Player or Pro, um, you need to use Intel and Parallels allows you to virtualize as well, but you stuck with um, ARM. So you can't use Intel Sorry, you can't use um, x86 or 64, x64 on um, on M1, M2 very easily. You have to emulate that, and it uh, doesn't work very well. So yeah, my recommendation would be, I don't think M1s, M2s are there yet, so I would avoid a Mac if you want to do a lot of VM stuff. Because a lot of the VMs that you can download from you know um, different places, um, you're going to be wanting to run x86 or uh, 64. Sorry, yes. So that new M1, M2 is the one that Apple has built based upon the ARM architecture. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah so you can get, you can get Kali, uh, ARM version of Kali, but a lot of people have said that even, even though you can get it to run and it runs fine, some of the apps still don't work as well because some of the apps weren't written originally for ARM. My recommendation, if we get to that part, is that one, as a pen tester hacker, you don't run Apple. But that's that's a different story versus creating a, a testing environment. Like a lab, right? Yeah. right. I would I strongly recommend, because the Apple operating system is is proprietary, okay, and, and it's, it's opaque, there are certain applications that require access to the operating system that simply don't work well in an Apple environment. Some people will say the same about Windows, right? Oh, I would definitely say that about Windows. <laughs> so in other words, what you're saying is you're going to go bare metal for Linux, yeah, for for like real real deployments and stuff, right? If you want to make sure that all of your Kali applications work as they should, it should either be Linux bare metal or Linux in a virtual machine. but 
you can't run, I don't think you can run all, I know you can't run all the applications in an Apple or a Windows environment and have them work. And the last thing you want as a hacker is to not understand why something doesn't work. And it might just be your operating system. So, you know, you're, you're going through and things aren't working, things aren't working, and you're trying to diagnose why they're not working. You don't want to add the complexity that it's the operating system won't let you do that. I strongly recommend using any other operating system other than Linux, okay, for hacking and pen testing. Although I have seen people running Macs in pen testing environments, and I always scratch my head when I see that. It's like, you know, that's, I don't recommend it. I've never seen a Windows, I never seen Windows in a pen testing environment, but I have seen Macs, and I don't recommend it. Either one of them, it, it has to be a Linux environment if you want to make certain that your applications are going to work as they're designed. So th th let me just summarize, if I understand correctly, you would run Linux in a VM um, for, for labs and Linux bare metal for de for real deployment, right? Or do you, yes, you, that's, that's that's my kind of recommendation. Summary. Yeah, that's my recommendation is that you run Kali in, a, in different versions of Kali. It doesn't matter which, in my opinion, doesn't matter which one you use, there's going to be different strengths and, and weaknesses to the different versions of Kali. You know, the, the latest Kali isn't necessarily the best Kali. You know, some of the older Kalis have features that work even better than the new Kalis do. Right? And you can go all the way back to the old backtracks. And, and they had features that, um, in some cases, work better than the new Kalis. But yeah, for a pen testing environment, hacking, run it bare metal. For training purposes, you can run Kali in a virtual machine and and hone your skills there before you go out into the real world. I like what you said though. You know, if you've I think if you've got a Mac already for whatever reason, then you can build a lab and it, it works. I find it works fine on Intel, even though I have had issues sometimes with networking with VMware on um, on um, Mac Intel. Um, we, we all have problems with, with yeah. networking, no matter what the yeah. platform is, right? Yeah, and then, um, I, but I really, I really like the suggestion. You know, go. You, you you can start. So if you've got a if you've got a Mac or if you've got a Windows, then you can start. Um, if you haven't got a laptop, I love what you said about like just buy something. It's not the hardware that's important. It's you as a person. But let's 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 address some of the questions because I know we'll I'll get this all the time. And you know, <laughs> we're older, so I mean, I'm not so into the flaming war type stuff. It's like, um, Kali. Parrot versus some other flavor of Linux? Because some people are really adamant that you have to use a certain flavor of Linux to be a hacker. I would not agree with that. I would say that either, either one of them are excellent tools, okay? And they have different strengths. I'm not a, a flamer on either one of those. Yeah, exactly. And I would say, you know, choose one or both. You know, I have both of them. And I find that, you know, sometimes I'm using Parrot and sometimes I'm using Kali. In my classes, I always use Kali just to be consistent. But yeah, the, the, the people who are, you know, screaming at each other over which one's a better platform don't have, um, they have too much time on their hands and not enough things, other things to worry about. That's exactly, it's exact, exactly right. I mean, I often say use the tool that's right for you because people have different... Uh, tastes. So um, you use what works. So I'm glad you've, you've addressed that. So um, you use both. Um, you use, I've seen you use Kali in all your demos and that's just to be consistent. It's not because it's better. Right. I wouldn't say it's better. I'd say it's just to be consistent. And uh, I do use, I'm going to put a plug in for Dragon OS, which is a, a new operating system for doing SDR, which is really, really good. I think it's the best operating system for running SDR for hacking and uh, excellent tool. I can't remember the fellow's name who put it together, but he's done an excellent job. You got all the tools in one place and they all work well rather than having to constantly download and and find the dependencies. So it's Dragon OS and a great operating system. So I use that after having gone through a number of using Kali for SDR and using Parrot for SDR and a number of other specifically designed operating systems for SDR, I've settled on Dragon OS. So well, that's great. I mean, we, we covered that actually in another video. So I'll put that below where we, uh, where we did some SDR stuff and you showed Dragon. So that was great. Um, now I'm, I'm, I think the, the moral of the story is if you know Linux, you can jump from one to the other, right? Exactly. I mean, they're all Linux. I mean, both Parrot and uh, 
and Kali are both Debian Linux, right? So if you know Linux, and another plug for knowing <laughs> Linux, right? If you know <laughs> Linux, <laughs> if you know Linux, this you know it's it's kind of a foundational skill, you know, and you can take it, you can take it to Ubuntu, you can take it to Red Hat, you can take it to any of those operating systems, but you got to know Linux first. And you know, there's so much. You know, one of the hottest areas of hacking right now is IoT hacking, hacking the Internet of Things, which simply means all the devices that are now digitally connected in the world, including refrigerators and baby monitors and garage door openers and what have you. But all of those devices have small Linux kernels in them. They're all being run on Linux. And so if you want to be able to hack those things, which is kind of the leading edge of hacking, then you need to know your Linux, right? Because when you get inside, you're going to find Linux there. So let's summarize. RAM, minimum of four gig, but I, I like what you said. Don't spend lots of money trying to get the best CPU. Rather, save money and use that to buy more RAM. I would agree, yeah. In other words, you know, don't go out and spend all your money on the latest CPU because that's not that important. Take that money and put it towards RAM on the system. You don't need a GPU in your laptop. It doesn't need to be some fancy gaming laptop because you're going to use the cloud or some other device to do the cracking using the GPU anyway, right? I, I would say so. I mean, you know, a GPUs are much faster at password cracking, right? At hash cracking. But even at that, unless you have a really high-end GPU, it's not going, it's not it's not ideal to crack passwords on your own GPU. Right. There's lots of better ways to be able to do it. And one of them is simply go out and send it out to the cloud and have a massive machine be able to crack those hashes, which can do it much faster than you can. And I mean, it's so cheap these days to to rent the GPUs anyway. So it is. Um, it is. You might as well use the cloud. Another question, desktop or laptop, if I had to choose? Well, if I'm moving into a pen testing as a professional environment, I usually want to have everything on my own machine. I want to be able to bring it with me, right? So that pretty much argues for a laptop. And that's what I do. I mean, when I go into a pen testing environment, I bring my laptop, everything's there and ready to go. I can't imagine hauling around a desktop, but for a training environment, you know, desktop is great. That having been said, I know people do hacking pen testing on phones, but you know, honesty i don't know how <laughs> i mean i understand that some people that's that's their you know that's a limit to what they can spend but it's pretty darn hard to really do much hacking on a phone one it's not powerful enough and it's pretty hard to run multiple applications on the phone simultaneously but if it's all you have and it's a way for you to learn then great, you know, go for the phone. But if you can afford to get a used laptop, take that one step up and get a used laptop, I think you're going to be much more effective in a used laptop that than, than a trying to hack from a phone. I'm glad you said that because I think depending, you know, who's watching this, but I think a lot of the audience in certain parts of the world, they don't necessarily have the money for a for a laptop, but they might have a phone with them. So I've had exactly. this question recently. Can I start learning Linux? Can I start learning hacking if I don't have a laptop? Can I is can I use a phone or the cloud? What what can I do? I mean, you've kind of alluded to the fact that I can do some stuff with a phone, but it's limited, right? Yeah. Yes, I would say that, you know, if you're at that point where you're just learning the basics, um, I think a phone is a good, is if it's all the option that you have, you know, use the phone. But, you know, I know that in some parts of the world, phones are the only option. And so I'm saying, yeah, that it, those Android devices, okay, and even the, the Apple, but unlikely, it's unlikely to be an Apple in those countries. Android is a version of Linux, right? So you can do all your Linux stuff on your phone. You can learn Linux on your phone. Can you actually do your hacking? Well, the answer is yes, but it's not very practical. If that's all you have, go for it. Right? If that's all you have, I'm not going to say you can't do it. I'm saying it's not really practical, but I know that you know some people... You, know, you can buy phones for $20, $30, $40, 
and that's what people are using and if that's all you have let anybody tell you you can't do it but it's just going to be harder funny when when you're talking about that here i've got a pine phone and i'll link a video below where i'll show you how to crack a wi-fi password using a pine phone pine phone basically runs linux but <laughs> yeah i agree with you it it's 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 kind of hard it's um, it's 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 nice but it's um it's last resort i would say and i agree with you you can you can root a android and but it's uh, yeah, yeah, laptops just so much more powerful. Even the smallest, cheapest one is going to be much more effective than uh, a phone. So, w- what about and, a Raspberry Pi? Sorry, uh, if you wanted to say something like, first. No, I like the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is is an effective tool. I think that you can run you can run Kali on it, or you can just run the Pi operating system and download the tools onto it. I find it to be a good a good and effective hacking environment. So, I would recommend it as long as, of course, you have a television set, right? To act as a monitor right and you you know you can get even if you're talking about old pies you know you can buy old pies for 20 and 30 bucks you know the new ones are more expensive but the old pies will do the job and it's a good learning environment and i think it's it can actually be used as an effective hacking environment it's just maybe not as portable as you would like i think what's nice about the the newest pies is the um the the wi-fi card supports monitoring and injection mode so I'll put a video below where I show you how to do that with a Pi. Um, okay. It's nice that you don't have to buy an external uh, adapter, but it's slow. It's, it's it's a small little computer. It's a, you know if it's all you got, it's great, but it's it's slow compared to a laptop, right? Yeah, but if you you know it's it costs a, a fraction of what a laptop costs. So I I've been there. I know what that's like to have you know that's all that you can afford. Yeah. And you know so I'm not saying that you've got to go out and have you know spend thousands of dollars on a laptop. You know if you can put together fifty bucks, right? You can go out and get yourself a Pi and connect it to your TV set and you know start learning what you need to know in terms of Linux and Kali and get yourself and hone your skills until, you know, you can go out and spend more money on something better. I think what's what's so great about the world today, there's so much free stuff out there um, or low cost stuff. Um, The the barriers to entry are lowered. um, And there's so many options when it comes to devices like the Pi, stuff like that. Um, And I mean, like you said, like, don't try and buy the latest gaming rig or laptop. There's a lot of older laptops that you get on eBay and places that can get you started. Right. I agree. And, uh, you know, if I were to have to choose between a Pi and a phone, I would choose the Pi. The Pi is a, is a more effective device than trying to hack from a phone. And you can get them for approximately the same price. Um, you know, maybe just a little bit more for the Pi than the phone, but still, it's a, you're going to be much happier working with a Pi than you are with uh, trying to hack with a phone. I would find hacking with a phone to be very, very frustrating. And I think, I mean, uh, we need to make the point again, Linux can run on really old machines, like crazy old machines. So I mean, the, if you if if the if the goal is to learn Linux and learn the tools, um, then there's nothing stopping you, like you said, getting an older laptop if that's all you can get, and install Linux on it, and um, you know start learning. Exactly. You know, there's Linux is much more forgiving than Windows or Mac is, and it can run really well on older systems. So. Don't let the hardware become a barrier to get started in hacking penetration testing. Go out and get yourself a cheap used laptop and get started. That's great, Occupy the Web. Are there any closing thoughts or anything else you want to add before you wrap up? No, I just want to repeat that, you know, in hacking, 80% is the human, 20% is the machine. Don't allow you know anybody to tell you that you need the latest and greatest machine to become uh, an effective hacker. You can be an effective and great hacker with an old machine, with, you know, one of the older CPUs, put Kali on it, and away you go and you can do anything, almost everything and anything that even the the latest and greatest machines can do for a fraction of the cost. I love it. Thanks so much for sharing. Thanks, David. 